Hey friends, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be talking about my current favorite things, summer edition, sort of, summery things. It's a really random list of things. I got some games, some boot stuff, some music, some TV. These are all things that I've been vibing with recently, really enjoying, or just kind of low-key obsessed with, spending too much time on, etc. Got my list on my phone. I'm gonna start with food because I just made myself a drink. And one of my current favorite things is making boba at home. So my sister-in-law was in town recently and she brought some lychee boba and left it here. So I've been making myself some boba tea at home. And they're really good. I just got a lot of boba. Boba tea is nothing new, but it's really easy and cheap to make at home. You can get like traditional tapioca pearls or flavored ones at your local Asian grocery store, or I've purchased it off Amazon before. So it's really fun, it's really easy. You just boil the pearls in some boiling water for like five minutes and you make some tea, some milk of your choice in there, a little bit of sweetener, I had honey. This is a black tea one. Last week I made a really delicious one with hibiscus tea. And I put some strawberries in there and some honey and it was really tasty. And this is very refreshing and fun to drink. Also, these are reusable boba straws that I got off Amazon and they're great to have at home and I take one with me if I'm ever gonna get boba out and about. Save a straw, you know? Next, something that I've mentioned in a few videos before, OPI yellow nail polish. This is called sun, sea, and sand in my pants. Yellow is one of my favorite colors and it's really hard to find as a nail polish color. And I went and got a manicure and they had this and loved it. So I went to my local Sally Beauty Salon and got some. It's opaque, which is really rare in yellow nail polish. So it's not see-through and you don't need that many coats. And it's also a really bright, happy yellow color. It's the perfect summer color. I just painted my nails. Don't look too closely because they're not they're not cute and I need to touch them up a little bit. But really loving this. We'll be painting my nails yellow all summer long. Kind of along the same theme, my next favorite thing I've also mentioned in a lot of videos and they're yellow, pillow slides. These are an obsession of mine. They're absolutely incredible. They're foamy, really light shoes. These are my indoor shoes. I don't wear these outside, but I have really flat feet, so my feet hurt if I don't wear shoes, and these are incredible. I wear them around the house. I've gotten my mom to buy some, mother-in-law, my sister. They're really fun. They're kind of like that croc material. They're not the cutest shoes ever, so I don't know if I'd wear these out and about. But yeah, love them, wear them every day. One of my favorites, and they're pretty cheap. They're like 20, 20 bucks, 25 bucks. Get yourself a pair if you are in need of some indoor house shoes for the summer. You know, cause slippers are like hot, but these are nice cause they don't like make your feet sweaty and too warm. Okay, so next switching categories, let's talk about music. So before I got really obsessed with books, I listened to a lot more music. I listened to a lot more podcasts and I listened to a lot more music and I would find like new artists all the time, always would be finding new songs. Not so much anymore, still love to listen to music here and there, but like usually if I'm gonna have time to listen to anything, I'm gonna choose an audiobook. But there are some good songs that I've been really into lately, so I'm gonna just go through a few of them. The first one is Pressure by Martin Garrix featuring Toe Blow. I love some EDM. Kygo is one of my favorite artists and DJs. So I love some electronic dance music. This one is more chill, but it still has a good electronic beat. It's really fun to listen to when you're driving the car. And then another absolute jam of a song, Over It by Drax Project. This is a really fun New Zealand band. A couple years ago, they came out with a song, Woke Up Late, which was really fun. I think this is one of their most recent releases and it's such a fun little dance song. It's just, it's a, it's a bop. It's really fun. Would recommend if you're in need of a little, little dance party music. And then I'll add a little, a little weird one. A little surprising, underrated, didn't see it coming kind of song, but obsessed with. My husband and I cannot stop listening to it. It gets stuck in our heads all day long. We were at dinner with some friends and they showed us this song's music video and it's really fun, really quirky, really dorky really fun dance moves and we just can't stop listening to it and it's called Think About Things by Deo Frere. Probably butcher that because they are in a Slandic music group. They were in, I don't believe this year's, but last year's Eurovision, I think. So that's where my friends first saw them. But this song is so fun and it's 
it's just a fun time. It's a great song to sing along to and to dance to as well. It's really strange and it will get stuck in your head. And then to like take it down a notch, slow it down. I've been really into the new music that Ali and AJ have been putting out. I was a big fan of them back in the day. I'm really into their new song, Slow Dancing. It's a perfect summer evening song. Perfect song to listen to in the car while you're driving. So if you're in need of a new song, something to, something to listen to that's fun, check any of those out. They're a good time. Switching gears again, let's talk about games and puzzles. So right when COVID started, Brennan and I obsessed with games. Just could not stop. We bought so many, just were obsessed with games. We played them every evening. Obviously life is normalizing again. We're a lot more social. So we've slowed down on our game playing. We just don't choose to play as many games as we used to. We still love games, still a big board game fanatic. I actually have a lot of people watching my board game collection video, which is really interesting. So I'm wondering if I should make more board game videos, but let me know if that's something you'd like. I could do that. When we do get to playing a game, I have two here that I'm gonna talk about that's sort of the ones that we're just gravitating towards right now. And the first one is Azul Summer Pavilion. I absolutely fell in love with the original Azul game. If you haven't played it before, it's a beautiful strategic tile game where you have to place tiles into certain pieces and you get more points that way. It's a really fun game, beautifully designed, beautifully made. And this is a different version of that base game. It has a similar gameplay but just totally different layout and more things you can do and I got this on offer up for like 15 bucks brand new I think the original cost is around 40 it can be played with both two players and four players we kind of bring this out whenever we get a chance to it's really fun and then a total surprise kingdom duel this is a game we had never heard of again offer up plus covid plus board games is a dangerous combination my husband went on there, bought a bunch of board games. This came in like a big stack of random board games that we got. And this is a really fun two player game. This was a total surprise for us. We had never heard of it before. It's a good mix of strategy and chance because you're rolling the dice, but you also have to figure out like where you're gonna place certain things on this drawing board. And it's just a really fun game to play with two players. Really easy, kind of simple, not too complicated. doesn't take too long. You can play several rounds and it's overall pretty like simple to learn, but a really good time. And the last thing in this category, I'm gonna mention a puzzle. I absolutely love puzzles with all of my heart. I do a lot of puzzles, usually around one a week. I have a ton of puzzles. I'm not opposed to redoing a puzzle. I just need like some time in between. So I'll do one and then like six months to a year later, I can do it again and still have a great time. So I have quite a bit of puzzles in my puzzle collection. This is one of my favorites. I was in Leavenworth with my husband. We went on a little road trip and we saw this really cute bookstore, went in and they had these puzzles by Flo. Really enjoyed this puzzle. It's not only absolutely beautiful summary. There's like fruit and flowers and animals on it and camping. It was also really high quality and fun to do so I would definitely pick up more puzzles by this company. Up next, TV and movies. One of my favorite things. Before books, obsessed. Obsessed with TV and movies. Back in the good old college days, I definitely was a big binge watcher. I mean, who wasn't? I feel like it's sort of a millennial rite of passage to binge watch shows on Netflix and all of that. And I was, I was really into that. I think TV and movies were my first love before books. And I definitely watch way less than I have ever watched in my life, but I still keep like an ear out for any good things that people are watching and really into. And I will always take any recommendations for a really good TV series or a good movie or movie series. My husband and I have a big list of stuff that we want to get through. Last year during lockdown, we watched all of the Marvel movies and I had very low expectations, but it was actually a great time. Like it was a lot of fun to dive into that universe, learn about all the characters, learn about that whole superhero world. But anyways, I'm going to talk about a few TV shows and a movie that I have absolutely loved recently. The first one I mentioned in another video is Anne with an E. This is a Canadian and Netflix series based on Anne of Green Gables. I didn't know what Anne of Green Gables was. I've heard of it, but I've never read the books. This show is based off of the books, but this show was just the most sweet, the most wholesome, the most like happy, heartwarming show I think I've ever watched. It's absolutely a new favorite, not just a current favorite, but like up there in like some of the best TV I've ever watched. It made me cry a lot actually, which was kind of surprising, came out of nowhere. I think I was sort of like feeling down in the moment and I just, I wanted to watch something happy. 
and it was so happy and it was so cute and it totally got me on a Anne of Green Gables kick as you'll see in my June wrap up because I'm reading through the whole series now because I couldn't just let go of the characters. Although the show, in my opinion, is better than the books. The books are great and I'm enjoying them, but I love diving into the world created and the characters in the show. And the books were written in the early 1900s, so I understand that there's a little bit of a disconnect there versus something that's a little bit more modernized, but still fantastic show, would highly recommend. It's a really good family show too. I realized I didn't even think I explained it. It's about an orphan girl named Anne gets adopted by an older set of siblings that live on a farm on Prince Edward Island in Canada. And she is this rambunctious, wild, energetic girl that has a crazy imagination and has a lot of dreams. She gets into a lot of mischief and trouble. The characters in the town are adorable. Absolutely fantastic. Another thing that I watched on Netflix recently that absolutely made me cry was a total surprise was my octopus teacher. This is a beautiful nature documentary. It is about a filmmaker who was at a crossroads in his career. He didn't know what he wanted to do next, but he knew that diving into the ocean and swimming in the ocean every day and watching like the sea life really brought him joy. So he decided to do it every single day. And he ends up observing and capturing the social dynamics of this shallow water coast area near where he lives in South Africa. And he establishes a connection with this octopus and follows the course of its life over a year, year and a half and films it every single day. This was just so surprising to me because it was beautifully filmed, beautifully told story. But at the same time, I found myself very concerned for the man and for the octopus and its life. And it was just this beautiful story about our earth and the animals in it and connecting and being present. It was stunning, it made me cry. I'm a big sucker though for nature documentaries. I love all the planet earth ones and anything that David Attenborough narrates as well. But I would highly recommend this one if you love science at all or nature or animals or just want something like peaceful and beautiful to watch, would recommend it. And finally, a movie in this category that I absolutely have loved is The Courier. This is a newer release. Actually, it was my first movie that I watched in theaters since COVID. And this was such a cool movie. I absolutely loved it. This movie stars Benedict Cumberbatch and he is a businessman living in England who's recruited by MI6, which is the British intelligence agency, to covertly go to Russia and make contact with a high up Soviet man who wants to defect and leave Russia. And this is set in the 60s during the Cold War where America and Russia had a lot of tensions. It's a spy movie. It's a movie set in Russia and in England. I might be a little bit biased of why I loved it so much. I am a sucker for any movies or books or anything set in Russia or having to do with Russia because I am Russian. So I love that cultural tie-in. I think that one of the standout things in this movie is that the Russian spoken in it and the Russian actors are actually truly Russian. So it wasn't that like horrible butchered action movie Russian, but it was truly perfectly fluent spoken Russian and the actors all looked Russian and looked real. And I think it was partially filmed in Moscow as well. It's based on a true story, which makes it that much more heartbreaking. Well, I would 100% recommend it. More people need to be talking about it. More people need to be watching it. I actually put on my list of nonfiction to read this year, and the book is called The Spy and the Traitor. And I recently heard someone mention it. I haven't read it yet, but mention the synopsis. And it was very much, I think, what this movie is. So maybe this movie was based on this book. I'm not entirely sure, but I feel like I 100% want now to read the book ASAP because this movie was so good. All right, almost done. I just wanted to mention two apps that I've been really loving recently. The first one is called Letterboxd. And this is basically Goodreads, but for movies. So you can log all the movies that you watch and give them ratings and leave a review and you can give half stars too. So it's on a five star range and it's really fun. I've seen several people using it. I love tracking the books I read. I love just data and tracking really anything going on in my life. So I really like that this app exists for tracking movies and it's really easy to use. And I just love logging all the movies that I watch or have watched in there and tracking new movies and also like adding movies I wanna watch on a separate list. Would recommend if you are a big movie watcher. And the other app that I recently discovered 
discovered is called Bin, B-E-E-N. If you are a big traveler, this app is really fun. It's very simple. All you do is you log all of the countries you've visited and you can log the states that you've visited in the US and it just tells you how much of the world you've been to. So in my app, it says that I've only seen 8% of the world, which is a little crazy. I mean, realistic because I haven't been that many places, but I've been to some places, but only 8%. I've been to 24% of Europe, 2% of Asia, 13% of North America, and 3% of Oceania. And then I've been to 44% of the United States. So still a long way to go. I just really like that all of this is laid out, again, really easy to use. And I like that the stats are just there for you. There's not really too much going on here. I don't know if there's a paid version that offers more features or anything, but I just think it's really fun to see where I've been. And finally, this wouldn't be a favorites video without mentioning a favorite book. A book that I've absolutely loved, that I've read recently, and I think, I think it's gonna be my favorite book so far that I've read this year in the last six months. Stay tuned for the mid-year freakout video, which I'll be making soon, if you want to know more about all of the books that I've read so far this year, which ones were some of my favorites. But if I only had to pick one, where the Lost Wander by Amy Harmon. I've mentioned this book already in a couple videos. If you wanna know some more in-depth thoughts about it, check out my May wrap up. But this is a beautiful historical fiction set on the Oregon Trail. It was absolutely lovely to read. It gripped me from the beginning. It's intense and there's some romance, but not too much romance. It's very wholesome. If you at all like historical fiction, you would enjoy this one. So those are some of my current favorite things and stuff that I've been into recently. It's sort of a random video, but I feel like you get to know me a little bit better based on the things that I've been liking and enjoying. Thanks so much for watching and for tuning in. I will see you guys with a new book video soon. Bye!